I joined Sing Mazai as a graduate student. I started graduate school in 1986. So my guess is I joined Sing Mazai in 87 or 88. And I applied for a grant and aid, which was my first grant ever, was funded somewhere in that 87, 88 time, and I've been a member since then. I have a graduate student who received two Sigma Xi grants before he joined my lab, but he still talks about them. Though that student went last year to judge posters for Sigma Xi, and the enthusiasm that he came back with, that he is an educator, that he can impact undergraduate education, you know, it lasted longer than many good experimental results in the lab. I think programs like the career fair sponsored today by Sigma Xi going on, that does really give people a picture of how broad the scientific community is. Um, I read The American Scientist um, often because it's, it's more targeted to, uh, you know, you don't need to be an expert. And there are lots of areas of science I'm not an expert in. And so I do think that it continues to, to help me get a big picture. But more than anything, what Sigma Xi does for me right now is helps young scientists. So all the way from undergraduates in my lab getting a small grant to graduate students helping those undergraduates write the grants to big national issues, you know, have been addressed by Sigma Xi, and so it's, uh, you know, a lot of bang for a small buck in terms of being a member. In 1999 or 2000, the Vice Chancellor for Research at UNC asked me, why don't you see how our postdocs are, are doing? And at that point, there was no national discussion about the needs of postdoctoral trainees in, in this country. There was no benchmarks for what kinds of mentoring they should get. There was no discussion about how to provide professional development programs and help postdocs transition in, into jobs. And Sigma Xi joined this discussion very, very early. And really, I think it's that their national postdoc survey that has provided the most information, A, the most accurate, B, the most in-depth, and C, I think the least biased. This survey was professionally done. The publication of the information was clear. It was concise. It was marketable to administrators. It was possible to go and say, this is the national trend in postdoc education now. And then, then, I guess it was, I don't remember when it was, not that long ago, there was an all-day symposium here to talk about where we are, what information came out of the survey, how we can take that information to the next step, and that was the best national discussion about postdoc education that I have participated in. Actually, I, I go um, both on our campus and nationally to talk a lot to undergraduate students and graduate students and postdocs about their career development and how to succeed as a scientist. And I never go to a talk now without mentioning that the Sigma Xi survey showed that the, the single biggest factor leading to success in science is planning and mentoring and a clear set of goals. So in some ways, setting goals falls on the faculty member. But in a lot of ways, it really falls on the postdoc. And you know, to be able to stand up and say a survey, you know, a large survey done across the country, you know, done at institutions ranging from ones bigger than ours to ones smaller than ours, says that the single biggest factor leading to success is how well you set goals, how well you discuss your plan with your mentor, and how well you see that through. I mean, that's probably the most powerful. Um, piece of information that I give. To me, that was the biggest thing that came out of it is I have a weapon, you know, in the arsenal to convince young scientists of what they need to do to succeed. But at institutions that haven't quite embraced the idea of offices of postdoctoral services, supporting postdoc associations, the other thing that came out of the Sigma Xi survey is how valuable they are. 
and how much more satisfied postdocs are when they have access to that. And I don't think before the Sigma Xi survey, anybody was really discussing the bigger picture of career development for postdocs. So anytime graduate students and postdoctoral fellows are out in the broader community mingling with biomedical engineers, mingling with chemists, mingling with computational biologists, every time a computational biologist hears about a true biology problem, this is what the disease process is like. Forget about the computational side for five minutes. Every time those kinds of conversations happen, you, A, spark the possibility of a collaboration that could last forever, right? Or you raise the possibility of a spark. Somebody's going to go back to the lab and learn a little bit more. And even if something that big doesn't happen, you provide these students and postdocs with an understanding of how far-reaching their research is. You ask students why they go to graduate school, and they want to contribute something globally to human health and to education. And then you put them in the lab and they do this very small project and they lose sight of the big picture and how big of a community the scientific community is and they get disheartened. And as soon as they get disheartened, you know, it's, it's this snowball effect and you lose these really bright, smart kids who want to hold on to the big picture. And programs like Sigma Xi have give them the opportunity to re renew their enthusiasm by showing the big picture, how their research fits in to a much broader community.